Next up is the first interview. We want to talk about making it big as a live performer in Kenya. And here to talk uh, with us is Koyo. Yeah, that's the way you pronounce it, Koyo. Uh, the way you were telling me, you're supposed to say Koyo. <laughs> and Henry, who's also an artist in his own right, but also a guitarist. Karibuni. To the East Circuit. Now the life of a performer. Yeah. Let's just dive into it uh, with regard to how you write your songs. You write it differently from uh, any, anyone else who's just a recording artist? Mm. Well, not really. Because, mm. um, I think so writing on, on its own is yeah. a craft. So any songwriter um, is a songwriter first before they are either a recording or performing artist. So you write the song and then you decide whether you want to perform it or you want to record it. Mm. So I don't think necessarily the process is different because I could use a bit mm. to create the song and then I could go and collaborate with Henry. Okay, could you come closer to the microphone? Thank you, thank you very you much. Said. And now, uh, why I'm asking this is because whenever I see like people who are actual performers mm -hmm. and not recording artists, it's like they're in tune with whatever they're doing on stage and it's like they wrote their songs with the stage in mind. Yeah. Do you have that process with you? Yeah, so there's the, you write the song, and then there is the performance element, which is also a little bit of a production. Mm -hmm. So you have to see yourself performing the song before you even, so say, part, uh, get to working with it with a band. So there's me as Koyo, I come up with a song, I come up with an idea, and then I go and share it with Henry, and then Henry tells me, oh yeah, maybe this, this is what wax maybe mm. we need to put breaks here and so if i'm a true artist uh, or performing artist i would envision what those breaks mean mm. so if, if 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 um if we're trying if there's it's a song about love and it's very passionate and we have um bruno mass is a very good example if, you, yeah. if you're studying at um, an artist uh, you'll notice how passionate he gets on certain breaks or how he expresses himself. So it's just using everything that is happening at the same time. Because mm. when you're listening to create to that song, atmosphere of a live performance. Exactly. So there's the there's the performance atmosphere, and then there's the recorded atmosphere. And one of my favorite artists is Erika Badu, and she says that when you're recording a song, you are actually creating a moment mm. that is frozen in time. So what we're, what he was just playing mm -hmm. is a moment that is that was made and frozen in time mm -hmm. and then we keep enjoying that and that's why you it's easy to play back and be like oh it's giving me this vibe mm -hmm. but then performance is different so i could sing one song in a thousand different ways uh, because it's all about interpretation it's uh it's a mood thing so the same song we could probably do a demo hopefully mm -hmm. um but you could you could have different the variations, variations. Yeah. yeah so that and that's how you end up being a jazz singer a folk singer an depending R &B on the singer. twist you put to it yes. as the artist yes i like that I, i'd like uh, to hear your take on it because uh, as uh, koyo said uh those songs then you bring out whatever you want to come out on stage but before we we do that there's an ep that just came out with four songs and it was live recorded. So should we expect that live feeling from the EP? Of course. So, mm -hmm. Like I said, uh, when you're recording something, you're freezing that moment in time or you're documenting that moment. So um, the EP that we did is called Bloom. Uh, we recorded it at Michael Joseph Center. Okay. And it was, it's a four track EP. So all the four tracks you get to hear, um, if there was heaving, during the song, you will get to hear a little bit of that. You know, if there was um, dynamics, loudness, softness, you get to hear all of that. But really, it's about, there's nothing extra that has been fil used to filter that particular performance. Mm. So it's as raw as it was, you know? Just and capturing that moment. Just capturing the moment. Mm. Just ca but, but now, probably what we did different is it's not your regular phone recording. So um, there's a little bit of, of um, upgrading, but really it is, it is the, raw, the raw moment. The raw moment. Yeah. Now, Henry, yeah. uh, with regard to creating the music now as the guitarist in the band, uh, what's the process? Uh, once you're given the melody, uh, do you create those breaks yourself or how do you envision that process? So when we get the songs, actually what happens most of the time is you always want to know what's behind the song 
what's the message so mm. when when you start creating you always know the, the mood to give the song so maybe a mellow song or a love song you you you, you give it a, a a mood of love you don't just put many things so it's the message but when it comes to other songs like those hype songs they need like more energy so that's to put more breaks crazy intros uh you do it like crazy interludes but a soft song give it a mood mm. for the for you know when you're playing music like the audience someone doesn't know about music so you you create a mood for them to for them to enjoy to enjoy mm. yeah so una tarisha inaitwaje kuandalia mna andalia au na receive ama ana pakua the thing about i think um, being an artist mm -hmm. um, and it's really um, watered down but there's a lot of work so mm. we have to think like scientists what do what does the audience want how will they feel how when they, they when feel? they hear this yes there's a lot when, of when i get to this break will they connect exactly. with me exactly i get you now in terms of being a recording artist uh, do you feel like uh, there's a lot of cheating going on <laughs> let, let me explain why i'm asking that because there's a lot of uh, it's processed the vocals are processed overly processed uh, to some extent people are sounding robotic and uh, even the music some like henry just said he needs to understand where it's coming from so that he creates that mood but now with regard to most of the songs on airplay that's not the case so what do you think so number one i am i am both a performing and recording artist mm -hmm. so um my experience with the studio my first instance was was very frustrating because mm -hmm. i couldn't understand why i have to tone down because then you can't be all loud yeah yeah you have to be a bit more contained they'll process controlled. your voice and take it as loud as they want to yeah yes and then they will process you yeah, know yeah. but but, but one thing I've also learned as an artist is I am also in control of the output. Mm -hmm. So I can say I do not want it, some I don't know, I don't want auto tune. And sometimes I've been very deliberate uh, and said I want auto tune to this extent. I want auto tune on this song or not. Because mm -hmm. then that's also so auto tune is the dynamic like creator mood uh, as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I use it as a tool. Mm -hmm. Um, they have very many different artists. But not as a vocal replacement. Exactly, mm. exactly. So is it complementing your, your craft um, and your output? So I always think about the, the, the studio process as, as, um, as a craft in, on its own. Mm -hmm. And how am I working with all the different tools to create a But with all honesty, do you yeah. feel like uh, they're doing less work than you are? Because I, am, I still end up doing live versions of my music mm -hmm. then i put in a lot of work clearly um i i don't want to talk about that <laughs> because <laughs> uh, i believe there's a lot of choice and uh. maybe you thrive you choose why you thrive most so i love i love the um, the studio process or i'm challenging myself to embrace it even more mm -hmm. uh, but i thrive on a on a live stage that's where you belong on I, the live oof, stage as born for it you know now henry yeah. uh with regard to creating that mood and that melody we were just talking about the processing of vocals and now everything is just bang of this bang of that bang of this you know mm -hmm. but now in terms of now the rhythm and the creation of this music do you feel like there's a better way to go about it in terms of the content out there right now in kenya uh, actually what happens with him yeah any music we're gonna play today yeah. uh -huh. he only sends the I've, 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 him singing without even instrumental uh -huh. so i listen to it and then sit down i come up with three themes everything i go with the band i tell them i want this Bas feeling. basically what producing is but now the raw essence of production yeah yeah so what happens with people outside they're not taking their time to mm. to understand the music the music because music it's not something you wake up and just do mm. it takes time i've played guitar for eight years now mm -hmm. so and i'm learning and played for him like for four years now. So because I think you're an equivalent of a producer. What, what would you say to producers out there in terms of connecting with the people and making them feel the music? Well, uh, I always feel like producers, when you, when you bring them the track, mm -hmm. they want to do them the way they feel them instead of the artist, the way he should feel the song. Mm. So that's the problem. 
So you unaenda studio producer unamwambia nataka song hizo ndivi. Anakuambia hapana. Hii song unaweza ipay feeling but you see akianza kukupa hizo vitu kuna you start having a an attitude. In, uh, okay. yeah, so okay. producer anafa on idea ya, yake i compliment juu yake. Okay okay. Yes. There's there supposed to be a meshing and a blending. I think collaboration mm -hmm. is key. So there are times where I could write a song and then work with a producer to produce the song. Mm -hmm. Right? So if a producer is not listening to my ideas, then that is his project. Mm -hmm. It's no longer my project. I'm just voicing his project. But if if he is open to my ideas and, 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 and accommodates them, then we are really projecting someone. But then it's also um, the compass is true that you don't have to be bit then I will I have to listen to his track. You have to mesh with that idea that's different from yours. So why should it be different when I write a song and you don't know? You don't want to listen to it. You don't want to listen to my ideas. Because sometimes some songs, you, you get inspiration um, like a full pack. You can hear the sounds. You can hear what, what, what will work best with, with this particular song. And then you go to the producer and they completely turn it around. Mm. Now, not unless you're really open to that turnaround, it's really crazy. You become very closed off. Now, DJ Neshke, yeah. I also have something for you. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you are a local distributor of music. And live performances, is yeah. not requested. In terms of, like, a, a recording um, of live performances. And how yeah, do you yeah. feel? Do you feel like there should be a demand for it? Yeah, there should. Mm -hmm. as, as he has said, um, there's a feeling to it. See, when I play it, um, the record side, yeah, there's the normal sense of, I have this track. But when it's live, there's something to it. It's that feeling that gets you there. Mm. So uh, for live, I, I, I prefer, uh, to be honest, we prefer live much more better. Okay, we're not getting your voice. Uh, could you um, call you? Check, check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so my point is um, for live, live is much more better. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's say for instances where you go um, to weddings and you have um, the DJ and the live performance. Uh, so these both guys will play different sets. Mm. But um, when it comes to when the bride and the groom um, want to do their dance, I'd prefer a live. The live one. Yeah, because live is at the moment. Yeah. Because uh, honestly, I think even during that performance, anything can happen. Yeah. The bride might trip on mm. a rose petal or something. <laughs> <laughs> then Koyo would be like, uh, no, 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 <laughs> then smooth it out. <laughs> then smooth it out, yeah. Because the DJ would just be like, Zoo. yeah, it'd be like, oh, wow. I'll make what? it even more dramatic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, uh, live bands, even when you go to these um, festivals and where there's live bands, there's that feeling to it. Mm. Um, okay, to DJ, uh, I don't mind, but the DJ gets you hyped. But um, for the live performance, the live performance gets you. Gets you the in there, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. In terms of setting the mood, we were talking about love songs. Mm. Uh, <laughs> why is <laughs> you already smiling, Mr. Henry? Anyway, this is what I have to ask. Um, it, love songs, Kuna, there was a demand for Nigerian li love songs, a lot of them. They were just, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, you know, funky, funky. But now, in terms of live performances, it's setting that mood. Uh, do you always pull from your own experiences, even though it's Koyo's words? Because you have to also set that mood in th with that in mind, yeah? Mm. So, <laughs> Henry. Uh, music, uh -huh. always, uh, always feel like music. For you to play music, uh -huh. or any idea, even you, for you to talk, yeah. you must ha have heard from someone talking, you get to listen, then for you to interpret. Mm. And then you talk. So that's like music. The I, love I want to do an experiment. Because Koyo, you're about to do that uh, with your voice. But I want you to interpret love w using a riff with your guitar. Mm. This is a simple experiment. Funny. Mr. Henry. Like a, the yeah, just like a, like a solo, a solo like guitar. A, and easy. Yeah. Ah. 
Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. I get it, I get it. But now with your voice, mm. because now that's your instrument. Yeah. How would you interpret love with a riff? Or a run? Let me call it a run. A run. Mm. So for, for me, I love words. Mm -hmm. I also think humming is such an easy way to, to Even get with into, words, it's okay. You know? I, it's how you interpret it. We're, mm. we're very eager to listen. <laughs> La 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 <laughs> you can't get that in a studio. Eh? You can't get that process. I, I don't think it will be the same effect. But now you've meshed that, the two together, which we will do in just a few minutes. Now so people are eager to hear the collaboration that you came up with. Uh, but before that, let's still uh, talk about live performances in Kenya, revenue-wise. You know, people are saying uh, there's MCSK this, this prisk that. But now live performances is uh, where you, you're in control of the revenue you're going to receive because it's in accordance to how much work you put in. So do you feel like uh, live performers are making more money than recording artists? Mm. I think that it's the best of both worlds. So mm -hmm. if you're focusing on a recording career, yeah. then there are avenues that you can explore that will make you a lot of money. Um, other than just even the sale of the music, I think people who are entrepreneurial think beyond and they sort out deals like endorsements mm. you know if you have a huge following on your on your social media you can monetize that so I, that there are different ways to make money and not necessarily through the music it could be through the brand mm -hmm. you know um and that goes either way for uh, live for performers or, and recording artists know? yeah but then for live performers it's even harder because so if we do a gig with Henry mm -hmm. and say we're being paid X amount of money, then it's easier to do a split between the two of us. Mm -hmm. But then if we're doing a band, if we're doing like five, eight guys. So that's a whole piece band. Mm -hmm. And and that means if you're still paying us X amount of money and not Y am amount of money, it's it becomes really hard because that means that the all the eight of us need to probably do like more shows to yeah, get more, more shows money. to get yeah to get to but get. also uh, the fewer <laughs> uh, depends on the brand yeah yes. so is it more difficult to brand yourselves as a uh, performing artist mr henry uh, other than recording artists because i think for recording artists it's like uh, studio studio instagram but now for a recording artist yeah a performing artist rather uh, you need to give a demo of what you're capable of in that gig. So do you feel it's more difficult to actually, project your brand? Actually, live performance, getting a festival a gig, it's so hard because for you to get that gig, mm -hmm. what's special about you? What mm. do you have to offer more? Because mm. many people have heard all types of music. What do you have to offer? Yeah. So you must put your A-game. For mm -hmm. you to get that gig, a game. then you set standards. Design in your next time, one as in one of the need, Julie Funga Shoyani. If you've got to have auto Katuza, you don't look for gigs now, you start being called for. Mm. Yeah, if I could add on that, um, our culture here is really interesting because, um, if you travel to places like just in the region, 
TZ and, and UG, they're very pro live band music. But even if you just travel to Mombasa, you will notice that there are places where they play live band on a daily basis, Monday to Monday. But in Nairobi, it's probably just a night. You know, it's a yeah. Thursday thing or a Friday thing, and it's not consistent, and we're still competent with karaoke and all that. So for me, it's probably revisiting the culture that we mm -hmm. have as entertainers. So if you're curating a show, you have to, you know the value of a band or a live performer, then include that. Mm -hmm. so I think it's just also from an industry perspective, what are we doing to make sure that we all coexist and we all thrive? Yeah. Okay, uh, before we continue, I'd like uh, to take a short break and just give the people a sample.